Hey all, my name is Brandon Lace and I am a solutions architect here at Full Contact. And today we're going to discuss how to set up Full Contact's native app within the Snowflake Marketplace, as well as the use cases that would be tied to it. Before we begin and before we go through the overview, we're going to set up this fictional company named Urban Roots, and more specifically, one of its customers, uh, Willow Underwood. And to give an overview of this fictional company, Urban Roots is a company that sells trees in the urban setting, and they have different products from ash, birch, and cedar. So we're going to now zoom into Willow Underwood and how Urban Roots is currently seeing her. So as you can see here, this is the customer dilemma. Urban Roots is seeing Willow as three different profiles. You can see in profile A, Willow is an online purchaser, has a lifetime value of almost $300, has a particular phone number and a call center status that is tied to Willow that would show that she's happy. Then you can see in profile B, this is Willow still. However, there's no email because Willow went into the store itself, went and purchased, and then had an, a, a call center status under a different phone number that was seen as upset. And then you have profile C that is symbolizing anonymous behavior. Willow was under a different device, has went through, browsed certain items, maybe added to cart, but the company couldn't pick up that that was Willow because there was a unique device as well as no other information, no authentication that Willow did to be able to tie Willow uh, to these other profiles. And so now we're going to go back and discuss how full contact can come in, how full contact will supply what we call a person ID and that will help tie these users together using the power of an identity graph. And so before we go through all that, we have to set up the app itself within Snowflake. And so this will go through and explain how to set up what urban routes would then go through to allow for those features to, to happen. So the first steps here would be installing full contact for the Snowflake app. You could go through into the app section within Snowsite and you would go ahead and get, you would download it. There would be some prompts there that would allow you to uh, share which warehouse that you would be installing it to, as well as what the application name is. Once you do that, you should see a successfully installed. Once it's successfully installed, then you will start the configuration of the app itself. This will create and grant access to the API integration. A call out for the API integration is that this just allows for the licensing key and allows for usage. It does not have any other data go back into full contact. The data still remains into Snowflake. So these would be the steps that you would go through to create the um, access within the app, the API integration. And once that is complete, you would then go into full contact so that you could generate that API key. You would utilize that API key because the API key helps make it unique per account. Every person ID within full contact is unique to a person and also unique to account. So a particular account will have a different person ID for the same person versus a another account. And we do that for, you know, privacy concerns and for, you know, to allow you to have control of your own data and not have anyone be able to take and borrow that information or do anything with it. So once you go through, you will go through the platform itself within full contact. It'll ask you to verify your email. Once you're in, you can go ahead and generate the API key. You can name your API key, whatever you would like, and then it will grant you your secret API key from there. Once you have that information, you will be able to prep the input data so that you could start running the Snowflake app itself and go from there. So right here, we'll have the create the output schema and you'll grant usage to the application for the full contact native app. 
And then here you'll create a particular input view. This is, this is important because your data inside the column may be different than what full contact is wanting to see for, for an input perspective for emails, phone numbers, etc. So full contact takes in all that input data and would compare it to the identity graph to be able to set that person ID. And so you'll actually see that here. Once you generate this call, there's a copy and paste that allows this. And you can see in here, this is renaming the columns to whatever particular input that it picks up. And full contact will try to set it up itself. It will say, you have these unique identifiers, we can set them up and pass them over here. Uh, an important concept inside of this as well is the record ID. You would need to have the record ID be unique for that whole table. So if you have multiple rows of the same email or the same identifier, you would want to make that unique so that full contact can still run through it, supply the same person ID for them, and then you can later on merge those together in a downstream fashion. But I will go over to Snowflake now and show exactly how this works and how it gets called. So within this setup, once you call upon this, this would allow you to have this create view and it just allows you to easily copy it from there. You can then paste it inside of here. One call out that I would like to make is you can actually rename this to whatever you would like. By default, we name it resolve results. You can actually change it to be an output. So you can actually name this customer journey underscore purchase underscore output instead of the this whole item here. And you can rename all of these to be whatever your actual output table would be. And once you have that set up, then you could key over to actually running Full Contact's native app Resolve to be able to get those person IDs. And so you would call upon this. As mentioned, this is your input view that you created in the prior step. You would have your API key that would allow it to be unique to your account. And then the output table that you just created as well, it will now insert and append those person IDs into your output table. And we can see that by going into here. So this is an example of the input data that you would see. I want to highlight our star again, Willow Underwood. So Willow Underwood has this information and you can see that there's two in-store purchases of $127 and then you could see there is online shopping of $294. You could also see inside of here that there are different customer numbers so the company is actually seeing Willow as two separate people. And so if we go through here and actually show what the output would now give you after running Resolve, you can now see that there are person IDs appended to this table, and you can actually see that all of these person IDs are the exact same. So now this is saying with added confidence that Willow Underwood is the same person. You know, Willow Underwood is a unique name. However, if you have other customers, let's say John Smith, there may be a more common name. You wouldn't want to just utilize first and last name to be able to have that uniqueness. So this person ID gives you that added confidence from the identity graph and is able to display, yes, we are confident this is the same person, and now you'll be able to do more with it. And so now we're keying into the particular use cases that you would be able to do with combining that information. And so for one, we're going to combine the lifetime values of Willow. And so now you can see when positioning it under that person ID that Full Contact was able to create, you can see a lifetime value of $421. So if Urban Roots had a MVP purchaser and it's supposed to be over $400, the prior step and the prior profiles that you would see with them being disparate and separate, they wouldn't be able to reach this criteria to be able to say they are a high purchaser. Now this would actually hit the high purchaser for Urban Roots and Urban Roots can now cater to Willow in a higher fashion, maybe get her to buy select products. 
This also keys into, as mentioned prior, the call center statuses. So as we mentioned, Willow actually had two, uh, two calls and you could actually see that here. One call was on February and was happy. The other call was in May and was upset. There are actually two separate phone numbers. And so prior, the company treated those as two separate profiles and was trying to make amends to one profile and didn't see that it was a high lifetime value, treated it in a certain way. And so now after you run this, you can actually see and combine that information to say, this is the same person, same person IDs under a particular customer number. Here's some added information to do additional outreach. And you can see the latest day was May. And so there was an upset call status there. So now they'll be able to see that this is the same Willow that they saw before. And the latest uh, call status there was upset. So now they can start making amends to anything that went wrong in maybe the prior purchase to Willow. They see her as a high value customer. Now they could start catering a little bit more to her and having a better 360 view of who she is. Now we're going to go over into the anonymous web traffic. This was that profile C that we mentioned before. This is going to show just anonymous behavior. This would be an example if you're using an analytics vendor and you're tying in particular events, actions to products and gathering up any other information. From here, Willow is completely anonymous. You're not really sure who she is at this point. She's on a different device. She's browsing through certain items, adding to cart, but maybe abandons cart. But the company in general wouldn't be able to see who she is. Using Full Contact's customer recognition web tag, you're able to set that same person ID to the traffic itself so that it can carry on into events. And now you'll be able to pour those sessions into a known customer and start picking up some of that extra web traffic behavior and tie it to a known customer that you see. And so you could see in here, there's some you know product views, there's maybe some purchase information on different dates, and then there's car ads, all that show under particular person IDs. And so under these person IDs, you could see this is similar to what Willow was and or Willow is. And we can actually go in here and join those tables together so that you can actually see, yes, this was indeed Willow. This is the same person ID. There was a amount of product views. There was 15 product views under Ash, three under Birch, two under Cedar, and three purchases under Ash. Now you could start picking up and being able to see that Willow actually has an affinity for Ash and is able to piece that all together from that unknown anonymous traffic into her known person. So now you could see lifetime value is over $400. You could see that she has a product affinity of Ash and her latest call status was that she was upset. So this comes back full circle into applying the person ID here. Willow's unified under one profile. You can now see this is Willow's email. You can actually see that there's two phone numbers tied to Willow as an individual. And you can see lifetime value has now increased from that 200 and 100 to the $400. You could see the latest call center status was upset. Product affinity was ash. With full contact, you're able to see this is the same person and this can easily be done under Snowflake's app itself. Makes it really easy to use. And thank you and have a good one.